நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of our renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is a Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In my last video I explained about the significance of Magha Nakshatra and auspiciousness of Masi Magam. In order to predict the effect of the moon, you have to definitely take into account the light energy of the moon. During the month of Masi, that is mid-February to mid-March, when the sun resides in the Kumbh, that is Aquarius, and when the moon resides in the Leo, in Magha Nakshatra, it is said to be very, very auspicious. During the month of Avani, that is Shravan, mid-August to September, where the sun resides in Leo and moon resides in the same house as Amavasya moon, it is not good. Let us say the moon resides in the same Nakshatra Magam. But during the month of Avani, that is Shravan, while it is Amavasya moon, it is not considered to be auspicious. When the moon resides in the nakshatra of Magha during the month of Masi, it is considered to be very auspicious. But when the moon resides in the very same house in the month of Avani and when it remains as Amavasya moon, then it is not good. However, based on the concept that during Amavasya, when either sun or moon should be strong, the Amavasya moon during the month of Avani in the house of Leo does not deliver worst effects as the sun is strong here. In addition to this, even though if it is Amavasya moon during the month of Avani and residing in the house of Leo, if it is aspected by Jupiter or Venus, it will not do worst effects at all. Try to predict based on the combination of light energy and gravity. So when the moon resides in the house of Leo, it is good. Try to make predictions based on the light energy of the moon. The moon must not be aspected by Saturn or Rahu. But the moon can be in conjunction with Mars. When there is a conjunction of the sun, moon and Mars in the house of Leo, it is said to be good. It will not deliver bad effects. When all the three planets reside in the house of Leo, they will be in a good status. In addition to this, when moon is waxing moon and it has crossed the status of Amavasya, it is considered to be more auspicious. Therefore, when the planets Mars, Sun, Moon and Jupiter are in conjunction even when all these four planets are in conjunction in the house of Leo, it is said to be good. It is such an auspicious state. You can very well understand this concept by observing the natal chart of ex-Prime Minister of India, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. You can find in the natal chart of ex-Prime Minister of India that Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus and Jupiter, all these five planets are in conjunction in the house of Leo and the moon has crossed the status of Amavasya and it is waxing moon. Therefore, the sun, the waxing moon, Venus, the Mercury and the Jupiter are all in the house of Leo. All the natural benefits were in the house of Leo. This is the reason why Rajiv Gandhi became the Prime Minister of India. So due to this combination, as I said, the sign of Leo has got the highest Subhatva status. I always say that the house of Leo has to be in superior Subhatva level to get highest authoritative positions in the government. 
when the house of leo is very very strong by the connection of natural benefits that is the aspect of jupiter or venus or when venus or jupiter resides in the house of leo all these combinations will lead the native to work in the government sector as higher officials either as manager or any authoritative positions it is more favorable when the sign of leo is the 10th house to the ascendant and in addition the sun getting directional strength the subhatva of the house I will explain all these in my future online classes. Now let us come back to know the effects of the planets in the house of Leo. I already told that moon can reside in the house of Leo. The moon can reside in the house of Leo and it can be in conjunction with Mars. But it should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu. It can reside alone in the house of Leo. Please try to predict the effects based on the strength of the moon that is light energy of the moon. If the moon that resides in the house of Leo is Amavasya moon, of course it is not good. Imagine that sun is in the house of Virgo and the moon is in the house of Leo heading towards the Amavasya, then definitely it is not auspicious. For the planet moon, definitely you have to predict based on its strength based on its light energy its own light energy imagine that a person is born during the month of puratasi that is bhadrapad mid september to october and the native is simma rashi it signifies that the moon is heading towards amavasya and is waning moon which is not considered to be good this waning moon will not give good effects but imagine another situation during the month of adi that is ashad mid july to mid august the sun will reside in the house of cancer and the moon will reside in the house of leo so is it good of course because the sun and the moon exchange their houses mutually that is parivartan this is a good status for the moon this is the way you have to predict the effects of the planets with different rules and exceptions so when the moon is with lot of light energy in the house of leo it is considered to be very auspicious the next planet that i am going to explain is mars the three planets such as mars jupiter and mercury have such a wavelength understanding with the house of leo because this is the most friendly house for all the three planets mercury likes the sun very much that the sun is a friendly planet to mercury and the sun likes moon and jupiter remember the sun does not like mercury it is neutral status but the mars and jupiter are friends to the sun and mars and jupiter are very friendly planets to the sun in brief Mercury, Mars and Jupiter will have such a good wavelength in the house of Leo. When these three planets are in conjunction in the house of Leo or if they reside alone in the house of Leo, both the house of Leo will be strengthened and the planets will also gain strength. When Mars is alone in the house of Leo, then it is Subhatva. If you have observed the natal charts of the doctors definitely you can notice this if the planet jupiter is in the house of leo then jupiter gets subhatva in general we say that venus and jupiter rents or makes the house subhatva and this is the reason that people becomes doctors but i would like to mention one important point here if mars alone is in the house of leo without any connection of jupiter or venus and it has got some subhatva in navamsa as well definitely they will become doctors but what difference it will make the shortcoming is they will earn less we will discuss about this further in another video i will even write about this in my article or publish 
a video dedicated for this. So there are many combinations in astrology and what I say will be 100% valid always. Since because in general you assume that Subhatwa is attained by only the connection of natural benefits, you might wonder at how a person works as doctor though in the natal chart the Mars is in Leo without any connection of Jupiter or Venus. When Mars alone residing in the house of Leo without any connection of Jupiter and Venus, the person will still be a doctor, the person will work as a doctor or the person will work in the fields related to Mars. When the planet that I mentioned resides in Leo, then it achieves a Li Subhatwa and this is the way you have to predict. For example, when Mars resides alone in Leo without any connection of natural benefits, it still gets Li Subhatwa. The next planet that I am going to explain is Mercury. When Mercury is alone in the house of Leo, then it is very auspicious. Even if the Mercury is in conjunction with the Sun in the sign of Leo, it will be in a comfortable state. And when Mercury attains Subhatwa, it is of course auspicious. But the Mercury should not be in conjunction with Mars because the Mercury and Mars are inimical to each other. You have to identify or predict the effects of the planets based on the relationship between the planets. The Mercury can be in conjunction with Venus. When Mercury is in conjunction with the Venus, Venus will not be comfortable but Mercury will be more Subhatwa. The reason is the sign of Leo is inimical to Venus. But the house of Leo is favorable to Mercury. Let us take a real time example. Imagine you and your friend are going to your friend's house. You are going to the house whose house owner is friendly to you. But the friend who accompanies you does not like the house owner whom you introduce to him. This is the way you have to understand the status of Mercury and Venus in the house of Leo. The sun is the house owner of the Leo sign. Mercury and Venus are two friends who are in the house of Leo. Then Venus will not be comfortable but Mercury will be comfortable. This is the way you have to predict the effects of the conjunctions of the planets. Imagine that in the house of Leo, Mercury and Venus alone are in conjunction. What would happen then? How to predict the effect then? The Mercury and Venus are mutual friends. They are very friendly to each other. Among these two planets, Venus and Mercury, Mercury likes the house lord and it treats the sun as a very friendly planet. Let me take another real time situation. You are being accompanied by your best friend and you both are going to a house whose house lord you treat to be very friendly. But the friend who accompanies you treats him as an enemy that is the house lord or the house owner as an enemy of course there will be a lot of enmity between them you might talk to the house owner very friendly but your friend who accompanies you cannot do the same the friend who accompanies you that is venus will be very uncomfortable this is the way you have to understand the effects of the planet's conjunction when Mars and Mercury are in conjunction in the house of Leo, the Mercury will not be comfortable because the Mars and the Sun are mutual friends and the Mercury is inimical to Mars. As I explained for Venus and Mercury conjunction, where Venus will not be comfortable in the same fashion, when Mars and Mercury resides in the house of Leo, the Mercury will not be in a comfortable state as Mercury is inimical to Mars. The significant reason behind this is Mercury treats Sun as its friend, whereas in turn the Sun does not treat Mercury as its friend. Rather Sun treats Mercury as its enemy. In contrary to this, Mars treats Sun as its friend and in turn the Sun also treats Mars as its friend. So they are mutually friendly to each other. Whereas this does not happen between Mercury and Sun. 
So when Mars and Mercury are in conjunction in the house of Leo and when the sun is also there, who the sun will treat well more? Definitely the sun will treat Mars better and will be more friendly with Mars. Imagine a real time situation where you, that is Mercury, going into a house where you treat the house owner or the house lord very friendly. In turn, the house owner or the house lord does not treat you as a friend. And a person who is an enemy to you accompanies you and visits the same house. This is the state of the Mercury. Mercury will be under some pressure since it is in conjunction with an enemy planet. This is the way you have to understand the effects of the planet's conjunction. So this is what would happen when Mars and Mercury are in conjunction in the house of Leo. Mars gains more strength in the house of Leo in this criteria. Because Mars will be in a happy mental state. You can explore more by analyzing the degree of conjunction between Mars and Mercury. You have to also analyze further that if the sun resides in the same house or the Mercury got combusted etc. When Mars and Mercury alone or in conjunction in the house of Leo, then Mars gets Subhatwa and the Mercury will not spoil the Mars because Mercury is not in conjunction with any other planet apart from Mars. So Mars gets more strength when it is in conjunction with Mercury in the house of Leo. Finally, I would say that the major planetary period of the Mercury, that is Mercury Dasha, will spoil and the major planetary period of Mars will deliver benefits. This is the way you have to make predictions for the Dasha of the planets. If Mercury, Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, the Mercury is further weakened. The lone Mercury will deliver benefits when it resides in the house of Leo. When Mercury is in conjunction with the Venus alone in the house of Leo, Mercury is more more auspicious. When Mercury is in conjunction with Jupiter in the house of Leo, you have to consider some points. Of course, the house of Leo is friendly to Mercury. The house of Leo is friendly to Jupiter as well. But the relationship between Jupiter and Mercury is as that of between Mars and Mercury. Though Mercury gets Subhatwa by the conjunction of Jupiter in the same house, it will not act on its own. Because Jupiter and Sun are friendly to each other. They are mutual friends. And Mercury will be under the control or influence of Jupiter. When Mercury is in conjunction with Rahu in the house of Leo, then it delivers worse effects. The Mercury is in its friendly house but it is eclipsed by Rahu and when Mercury is in conjunction with Saturn, of course it delivers worse effects. In a nutshell, when Mercury alone is in the house of Leo, it is favorable. Let me now explain about the next planet, Jupiter. When Jupiter resides in the house of Leo, it is very auspicious. When Jupiter resides in the Leo house, it will aspect the Sagittarius house, the Aquarius house and also the Aries house. Jupiter that resides in the Leo strengthens its own house Sagittarius by its fifth aspect and aspects the seventh house and also the ninth house which is a friendly house to the Jupiter. It is such a favorable position for Jupiter when it resides in the house of Leo. It is very very auspicious. There are three stars that can reside in the house of Leo. Magam that is Magar, Puram that is Purva Falguni, Uttram that is Uttra Falguni. When Jupiter resides in any of these stars, that is Magar Nakshatra, Purva Falguni Nakshatra, Uttra Falguni Nakshatra, it is auspicious. The planet lord of Magam is Ketu. The planet lord of Purva Falguni is Venus. The planet lord of Uttra Falguni is Sun. When Jupiter resides in any of these three stars, 
it is auspicious. If Jupiter resides in the first pada of Puram, that is Purva Falguni, then it is Vargothama for Jupiter. When Jupiter resides in any of the house of Guru Valayam, that is Jupiter ring, it is very auspicious. The fixed house like Rishabh, Rishik, Simha and Kum, that is Aries, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius, are set to form the Guru Valayam, that is Jupiter ring. When Jupiter resides in these houses, Aries, Scorpio, Leo and Aquarius, it is considered to be very auspicious. It is very significant position for Jupiter. I have already explained a lot about this and I don't want to explain about this further in this video. When Jupiter resides in the house of Leo, it will deliver great benefits. Please remember, in order to predict the effects of the Jupiter in the Leo, you have to consider which ascendant the native is. Based on which house the Leo is to the ascendant, you have to predict the effects of the planets. When Jupiter resides in the house of Leo, it will be in the 6th house from its own house Pisces, that is mean, and it will be in the ninth house from its another own house Sagittarius, that is Danush. When Jupiter resides in the house of Leo, it aspects its own house and it strengthens the Sagittarius, that is Danush. It will also strengthen the Aries house by its ninth aspect. This is a very friendly status for Jupiter. The Leo house is just next to the house of Cancer. So based on the light energy of the Jupiter, it will deliver benefits. As I usually mention, when Jupiter resides in the house of Leo, it should not be in connection with the inimical planets. It should not be in connection with Saturn or Rahu. In case, if Jupiter is in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu, what would happen? Then the Saturn or Rahu will get Subhatva and the Jupiter will lose its strength. A noble man is always noble. But when Jupiter is in conjunction with the enemical planets like Saturn or Rahu, the Saturn or Rahu will get more Subhatva and the Jupiter's strength will be reduced. Let me explain the next planet, Venus. The Venus should not be alone in the house of Leo. It will lose its own nature in the house of Leo. What is the reason? Because Venus is in the enemical house. If Mercury is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Leo, Venus will be a little bit comfortable. When Venus is in conjunction with Mercury in the house of Leo, it will be in a mental status like even if the sun is enemical and it is very offending, there is a friendly planet Mercury in conjunction to support it. This is the mental status of the Venus when it is in conjunction with Mercury in the house of Leo. When it is alone in the house of Leo, definitely it will be in an agitated state and it will not be in a comfortable state. The Venus should not be in the house of Leo. And this is also the preceding house to the house of debilitation of Venus. Therefore, when Venus resides in house of Leo, Venus will be heading towards the debilitated position. Therefore, it is not good when Venus resides in the house of Leo. It will not deliver benefits. When Venus resides in its own star, that is Puram, that is Pura Falguni, it will deliver the effects according to the ascendant that is based on which house the Leo is to the ascendant. The Venus should not be in conjunction with Saturn or Rahu in the house of Leo. The Venus will lose its whole nature when this happens. What would happen when Venus is in conjunction with Mars? Venus will lose its own strength and Mars will get Subhatva by the conjunction of Venus in the house of Leo. What would happen when the house lord of the Leo itself is in conjunction with Venus? That is, when sun is in conjunction with Venus in the house of Leo. What will happen is, the Venus will be beaten up by the sun and it will make the sun Subhatva. That is, Venus will make the sun Subhatva. 
It will help the NATO to get government related positions, but Venus will lose its own strength. Venus loses its strength when it is in conjunction with the Sun in the house of Leo. Try to understand the nature of the natural benefits. When Venus is in conjunction with Moon in the house of Leo, Moon will dominate the Venus because the house of Leo is friendly house to the Moon. So finally what would happen if Venus is in conjunction with Mercury alone in the house of Leo? It will be in a mental status that even if it is attacked by the inimical planet Sun, Mercury is there to protect the Venus and Mercury is there to support the Venus. This would be the state of Venus when it resides in the house of Leo when it is in conjunction with Mercury. Well, let me explain about the next planet Saturn. The planet that should not reside in the house of Leo is Saturn. When Saturn resides in the house of Leo, it will aspect its own house Aquarius. Therefore, it will spoil its own house Aquarius. The houses that Saturn should not reside are the house of Cancer and the house of Leo. The planet will be in such an agitated state. Saturn will also spoil the house Veritas. The Saturn will affect both Sun and house of Leo. The father will not be good or one cannot enjoy the paternal properties etc. When Saturn resides in the house of Leo, unless it gets Subhatva by the connection of Jupiter, Venus or lone Mercury, the Saturn will not do benefits. Remember, the Saturn should not be in conjunction with Mars. In case, if Saturn, Mars and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, then it is such a worse condition. When Saturn resides in the house of Leo, it will spoil the house of Leo and it itself will be in an agitated state. It is almost like a drunkard who was left on the platform. The only exception or the only antidote for this condition is the connection of a benefic. It can either be the conjunction of Jupiter or Venus or the aspect of Jupiter or Venus. So when Saturn is in the state of Pavatva in the house of Leo, it will give worse effects. When Mars is in conjunction with Saturn, of course the Saturn will spoil the Mars because Saturn is rowdy and insane. It can do anything whenever, whatever it wants. Don't assume wrongly that when Mars is in the house of Leo, which is a friendly house to Mars, it can able to dominate the Saturn and it can able to defend the Saturn. It is not at all possible. You cannot predict how Saturn will react. So it is not possible for Mars to dominate. So when Mars and Saturn are in conjunction in the house of Leo, the Pabatva of the Saturn will be increased at the same moment, the Subhatva of the Mars will be reduced by the conjunction of the Saturn in the house of Leo. Let us imagine that Saturn, Mars and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, then the planet Sun is dead. So, when Mars and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, without any other planet connection, then the Sun will be dead. It will definitely spoil the house of Leo. So in any case, Saturn and Rahu should not reside in the house of Leo. Well, suppose if Saturn and Rahu resides in the house of Leo, then the native should never go through the major planetary period that is Dasha of these two planets, Saturn or Rahu. Even if either Saturn or Rahu is alone in the house of Leo, the sun should be somewhere else with enough strength. When Saturn and Rahu together resides in the house of Leo or when Saturn or Rahu residing alone in the house of Leo and sun resides in the house of Aries with exaltation status, then the situation will be okay. In contrary to this, if sun is in the debilitated house Libra and when Saturn resides in the house of Leo, which will aspect the house of Libra by its third aspect, it will spoil the sun more. It is like beating the dead man more. 
the sun will have such an impact from the Saturn. I repeat, if the Saturn is in the house of Leo and sun is debilitated in the house of Libra, consequently the sun receives the third aspect of the Saturn, then the position of the sun will be very worse. The father will not be a good father to the native and the only antidote to this is the Subhatva of the Saturn. The antidote for this is the Saturn should be aspected by the Jupiter. Remember Jupiter with very good strength. In this case the Jupiter should be in its own house Sagittarius. If Jupiter resides in the house of Sagittarius it will aspect the Saturn which is in the house of Leo by its ninth aspect. When Saturn gets Subhatva by the aspect of strong Guru, then the situation will change. So, when you try to understand all the concepts based on the idea of Subhatva and Pabhatva, then your prediction goes very easily. It is just a cakewalk. Therefore, in brief, I would like to say something. The Saturn should not be alone in the house of Leo. Or Rahu should not reside alone in the house of Leo or they both should not be in conjunction in the house of Leo. If Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, then during Saturn's major planetary period and Rahu's minor planetary period, that is during Saturn Dasha and Rahu Antar Dasha or during Rahu's Dasha or Saturn's Antar Dasha, it will spoil the status of the father that is, the native will lose the father or it will bring the status of the father to very low status. Or the native will lose the authoritative position or everything related to father will be worse. Whatever significance I have mentioned for son will be spoiled when this combination of major and minor planetary period happens. You have to definitely predict based on which house is Leo to ascendant. This is very important. So please try to understand based on which house the Leo is to the ascendant and make predictions accordingly. So it is not favorable when Saturn and Rahu are in conjunction in the house of Leo. Even if Saturn is alone in the house of Leo, it is not good. If the native is Aquarius ascendant, and if Saturn resides in the house of Leo, then it will aspect its own ascendant house Aquarius, which is really not good. Saturn is in agitated state and aspect its own house Aquarius, which is not good to the native of Aquarius ascendant at all. If the Saturn is Subhatva, then the ascendant is okay. Because Saturn gets Digbala, that is directional strength, when it is in the seventh house, from its own house Aquarius. I hope you know that Saturn gets directional strength in the seventh house from the ascendant. I already mentioned that when Saturn is in the house of Cancer, one will be addicted to alcohol. In any case, Saturn should not reside in the house of Leo as well. If it is in conjunction with Venus, it will be okay to a certain extent. What would happen if Saturn is in conjunction with Jupiter in the house of Leo? If Saturn is in conjunction with Jupiter in the house of Leo, then Saturn will get Subhatva and Jupiter will lose its strength and that aspect of the Saturn will not spoil. And the Saturn in this case will not spoil the house of Leo. Because when Saturn and Jupiter are in conjunction in the house of Leo, the Saturn will be under the control of Jupiter. When Saturn is in conjunction with Venus, that is also good. When Saturn is in conjunction with Lone Mercury, then Saturn gets Li Subhatva in this case. If Saturn is in conjunction with Mars or Rahu, then it will spoil the house of Leo and it will spoil the status of the father as well. Anything related to the father will be spoiled during the major planetary period or minor planetary period of the Saturn, Mars or Rahu. So when I was explaining about Saturn, I also explained about Rahu. Rahu will deliver its benefits if only 
the dispositor, the sun is exalted. If you notice anybody who becomes a ruler, despite Rahu residing in the house of Leo, then the person would have gone through the major planetary period, that is Dasha of Rahu, during his very younger age. One of the subscribers raised a doubt regarding this by matching the natal chart of ex-chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Karunanidhi. I believe that I have not responded at that time, but let me take this opportunity to explain about it. If you find in a natal chart where Rahu resides in the house of Leo, yet the native is in a position to rule, then it means that the dispositor, that is the sun, is exalted or in very good strength. Three significant factors plays the role here. The house, house lord and the significator. All these should be strong. If all these three are strong, then the person is almost equal to Almighty. One of my subscribers asked that how the ex-chief minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Karunanidhi, became the chief minister of Tamil Nadu while in his natal chart, Rahu resides in the house of Leo. The reason for this is the sun is in conjunction with the exalted moon and it is Sivaraja Yogam. He entered into the politics during the major planetary period of Jupiter. The major planetary period of Rahu Dasha was over in Mr. Karunanidhi's natal chart when he was 20 years old. He entered into politics after 20 years of age. You have to predict based on the Subhatva of the sun, which was in conjunction with the exalted moon. Please try to understand this. Many raise the doubt that how Mr. Kalainyar became the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, though Rahu was residing in the house of Leo. I would like to say that when you understand these three points that I mentioned above, then definitely you can make predictions easily. Let me repeat the points. The Bhavagam, that is the house. The Bhavagadipati, that is the house lord. The third one is Karagan, that is significator or very important. Try to give 33 points to each of this. As per Vedic astrology rule, give 40 points to each. You know the fact in astrology, there is no 100 points in astrology. That is, the full points, that is the full marks in astrology is 120, not 100. If house lord and house are strong or house and significator are strong, then you can give 80 marks to them. If all three are strong, then you can give 120 marks. For example, in a natal chart, if you find the 8th house, 8th house lord and Saturn to be strong, where Saturn signifies the longevity, the person will live 120 years because the 8th house, the 8th house lord and significator, all the three are strong in the natal chart. Now let us try to analyze the same with the natal chart of ex-chief minister Mr. Karunanidhi. In the natal chart of Mr. Karunanidhi, the sun was in conjunction with the exalted moon and it was also aspected by exalted Jupiter which was unaffected by any malafic. It is in Sivaraja Yogam, so he got a chance to rule the state. If Rahu was not residing in the house of Leo, then what would have happened? Mr. Karunanidhi would have not been the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, rather he would have become the prime minister of India. So try to understand based on the concept of Subhatva and Pabhatva. This is the way you have to understand the concepts. I remember the question very well, which I have been asked long time ago. The subscriber asked me how Mr. Karnanidhi became the chief minister of Tamil Nadu while Rahu was in the house of Leo. And today I got the opportunity to respond to that question. So I would like to conclude with two points. The house of Leo is spoiled, but the house lord and the significator were very strong in the natal chart of Mr. Karunanidhi. If the major planetary period of Rahu gets over at a younger age for a person, very earlier, then the person can get authoritative position in the government. 
because any planet that spoils the house where it resides it will happen only during the major planetary period of that particular planet i would like to add another point if the house lord that is dispositor the sun is exalted then the house will not be spoiled so we are reiterating the points the house the house lord and the significator should be strong in order to deliver complete effects when the house lord the dispositor is strong then it will introduce the contacts with politicians contacts with government contacts with higher officials and getting authoritative jobs etc one can even become the district secretary but not minister please try to understand all these intricacies if you listen definitely it is easy to understand all these let us imagine an example rahu resides in the house of leo and let us imagine that the major planetary period that is dasha of rahu is happening and the dispositor sun is exalted then the person will be district secretary but not the minister the minister will listen to his words but he will not have the authority to sign any agreement as a minister if the major planetary period of rahu happens you can able to make accurate predictions if only you understand the intricacies of these concepts so please try to understand the effects of the saturn and rahu in the house of leo whatever planet in whose house rahu resides in the house lord or the dispositor must be strong and the significator must be strong then these two strengths together will deliver certain benefits let me explain about the next planet ketu ketu can reside in the house of leo ketu can be in conjunction with venus or ketu can be in conjunction with jupiter if ketu and jupiter are in conjunction in the house of leo then the person will earn crores of money ketu is the planet which can reside in any house of the natural zodiac but you have to consider the subhatva and bhavatva If the Jupiter, Saturn and Ketu are in conjunction in the house of Leo, then the person will be a sannyasi that is ascetic. Or you can predict based on the planets with which it is in conjunction with as I told for an example Jupiter. When Ketu was in conjunction with Jupiter, it delivers crores of money. Ketu will not spoil a house definitely. rather it grows the house ketu is not a planet that will spoil the house where it resides ketu will not deliver bad effects unlike the planet rahu this is the fact ketu will not deliver bad effects as rahu so based on this concept ketu can reside in the house of leo by try to understand which planets ketu is in conjunction with If Ketu is in conjunction with Saturn it will deliver more bad effects but Saturn will get Sutramavalu and Ketu will remain neutral when it is in conjunction with Saturn I have already explained in my theory of sukshma strength that when Ketu is in conjunction with the malefic planet it gives sukshma strength to the malefic planet so please try to make predictions based on the sukshma strength of the malefic Saturn and Ketu can reside in the house of Leo. Yet when Jupiter is also in conjunction with Saturn and Ketu, definitely the person will get into spiritualism. If Ketu alone is in conjunction with Jupiter, it delivers crores of money which is called as Kala Yoga. Well, in this video I have explained the effects of different planets in the house of Leo. effect of the conjunction of different planets in the leo and in my last video i explained about the importance of masi magam etc in the upcoming video i will explain about favorable dasha for the natives of leo ascendants and much more intricacies of the astrology well this is the question time can one become a doctor 
when mars alone resides in leo house without any connection of natural benefits in the rashi chart justify your answer if you are not sure of the answer watch this video again thank you the link of the aditya guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video which is accessible by both ios and android users the link of the google play store app is also given in the description box which is accessible only by android users the link for the tamil version of this video is available in the description box thank you